And, uh, and behind the uh, riding special we have a fantastic uh, 25B Bugatti. Uh, you can probably hear the engine whirring away there. Um, not blue, as most Bugattis seem to be, uh, French blue, but this is a, a red example. And uh, looking smart for all of them, they all seem the same to me, but um, they're a very, very popular car. As Peter says, he spoke before his TV body. 1935 and their derivatives, they won over a thousand races in their day, over 300 Grand Prix as well. They were just about the most unbeatable race car of the time. And that of course means that to says, and he's with a lady there, hello madam. And Oh, you've got a new hat, so you have. Yeah, keep the sun out of your eyes. Okay, I'll keep the sun out of your eyes. Thank you. Uh, behind the Austin 7, there's a, uh, a Riley. Again, a, a, com a combination, if you like. Uh, they're just a really um, usable vintage car. Well, you use it for the hill there. Up to the line, please. Thank you very much. And a Morris Cowley, a light blue Morris Cowley, uh, with a, uh, a dual cowl body. Now, is that a standard body, sir? No, it isn't, no. You build a body? No, no, I bought it like this. Yes, with Morris, you can still get quite a few of the spares, can't you? Yeah, yeah, good, good uh, clump spares. Yeah. Now, do you use it as a family car? You use it a lot? Yes, been to Ireland and Scotland on family holidays. You've heard of the, the bullnose Morrises that preceded this. Well, this was the facelift. This was the update to the bullnose Morris, and... They decided that because it had got that name that they didn't, really didn't want to uh, continue on that side of the room. So the bonnet, uh, the front grille was flattened off and this 1930 model is an example of uh, where the Morris Cowley went next. And it's going to be our last car up the hill because then we have a very, very rare 1908 TVR. This was a concept car. I'm joking, honestly, before you start. <laughs> what we've got is the, uh, the course closer that's going to... Brilliant try. Oh, I didn't make it up the hill. So the last of these vintage cars for the moment anyway, going up the hill, and then we'll have the uh, motorcycle. We'll have the motorcycle uh, commentators then. We have the car course now mounting the hill, going to check that it's clear, that uh, no wings or uh, rear racks or picnic sets have fallen off. I think the Morris Cowley had a bit of a chesty cough as it went up the hill there, but... Uh... Well, they don't like the do they? So, ladies and gentlemen, we'll hand you over now to the most of the time. the line, oh, followed up by Ted on the sunbeam, hopefully. Right, we've got the all the way from Jersey. What do you want to do? And the AJS is away now. Sunbeam moving up to the line, followed by, by the look of this, Southern. Factory, and we've got a here Rick Parkinson, uh, known to most of you for writing a half of the classic bike magazine these days, Rick. Yeah, that's so much. An accomplished man, and uh, I don't know really, but I'm lucky to do this for a living. So I just build bikes all day, spend all day in the workshop building things like this. So pretty good way to live, really. Speaks, speaks, uh, working for a living, doesn't it? Sunbeam Parallel 9 uh, is originally supplied to Fletcher, who is uh, also set up very early. Um, uh, Still going. 
most people will get electric starters for them or a, a rolling road. No, this fella gives you... One oh one, Martin Dutch Lamp from uh, three to seven bikes, I believe. I haven't searched yet. Here is uh, a Royal Enfield 355, but it's something of a special bike. Tell us about it. Oh, yeah, I think that's what Yeah, it's under the bed. Uh, it's not going to break the record going up the hill, but hopefully it'll get to the top. Well, as long as you make it, that's okay. Yeah, that's right. Right. 79 here is a place to buy some other joy, and uh, the riders come all the way from... Uh, you can't um, hear them, but you can certainly see them. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, but I can see you getting out and getting under sometimes, I'm sure. Yeah, always. And do you normally wear a boiler suit when you're doing that? Um. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you uh, obviously uh, can't have finger nails on, can you? Of course I can't get by the oil. But really, uh, congratulations on uh, such a large sending sir, from Sadden. No, it's, uh, yeah, it's a half a mile in one year. Okay, and how long do you have the time? I think you're looking at the time. Did you use the best thing? No, 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 no. Um, it's about 15 or 10 if I move here. But it depends how you drive, I suppose. But you look to get into a careful driver. You want to move forward, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We've got the Hot Rodders joining us now. So, uh, to say thanks to all the bikes, though, put your hands together for our motorcycles team. Fantastic. Uh, often with engineering and technical training, and with now time on their hands and energy to expel, this was the new pastime in the post-war era. And, of course, using Model A, Model T Ford, as we see several selections of, through to the ridiculous, but the one thing that's guaranteed is that the big V8s sound absolutely awesome. So, as you see them come up the hill, clap and wave, make them feel really loved and encouraged here at Cock Hill. This is a new one. Now, what's this club called? Oh, okay, well done. Off you go. 100%. And coming up behind... Uh... And it got named yesterday. So you're going to have no trouble. Off you go. Thank you. Right, you want to talk to our, uh, our blue car here? Looks pretty British. Easy, wouldn't it? But this is taking it to a new level. So what do you have to do to get a hot rod strong? Just, just put a big engine in it, it sounds like. Don't worry about the brakes or strengthening things. Stick some some significant design, uh, sending out head on the front. And then... Okay, so we um, Wayne, uh, the car to beat every hot rod in the world at the time. And so, so is it a prize runner? It is, it was mostly the hot rod of the century. Hot rod of the century, there we go ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well we have a massive hot rod uh, scene in the UK now and it's growing all the time, looked after predominantly by the National Street Rod Association, of which I'm sure a lot of these vehicles are members and they have a huge following now and there was some worry a little while ago when various bits of legislation were being put through about modified cars, but luckily we talked to them in power and sorted it out and now we trouble to make sure everything is well blinged. They've even 
uh, chrome plated the drive shafts on the back of that particular car there. And um, engineering skills for some of the higher level cars. So, so uh, do you, you, you enjoy this car quite well? But the trouble is with three wheelers, um, you can't miss the bumps, can you? No, you can't. You always want to get one in the end. You're, you're always going to pick up a best. Off you go. Thank you so much. The Borgia was what I predicted, and the BSA it is taking us back into our... T what we found out was it was a broken throttle cable, so he's going to put a bit of string between the gas pedal and the engine, and he's going to have another go in just a moment. Uh, so take it to the start right now. The wonderful Fraser Nash. The Super Sports from... Nine so many of us have here today. Hello, sir. So do you want to talk to our that friend, Ryan? <laughs> Can do indeed, it's a uh, 7 in motorsport being uh, made available for young young men who fancy trying their hand at racing in the day. Hello sir, tell us all about your friend. It's a Fraser Nash and it's a Fraser Nash that gets used, which is what we like here at Scott Hill Climb. As, uh, Kimber's best turns up to the start line now from MG, of course, and years since the very first MG. There is some debate, of course, as to when MG started. Was it old number one or wasn't it? So uh, I believe the MG guys are all celebrating it through 2023 and 2024. The centenary of MG. And as he says there, one of the very first... By um, Elvis behind him. Hello, sir. Off you go. Hello. Uh, behind the Elvis, we have an 8 meter Bentley, I do know. And again, you're a... a bit of Hello. 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 Good morning. And if I remember from last year, it's not your car. Yes, I'm not. I, yeah, you can do the whole hill in top. I'm sure you can. Off you go. Thank you. Well, the Elvis is on the hill now, and as it comes up the hill past you, just notice the shape of the rear of the coachwork of the Elvis. They were called beetle backs, and that is precisely the reason you'll see it when it comes past you. You know, the nickname the Flying Lorries as a compliment. <laughs> huge engine, huge power, and huge bodywork. And of course, it was a successful package that won Le Mans throughout the 1920s. Um, uh, uh, Red one, this is, he's ready, I won't hold him back. All the way from Malvern, of course, the three-wheeler uh, three Morgan, easy for me to say. And, and uh, that Jap-engine uh, one going up the hill now. Right, he's going top, coming up to the uh, line now. All the way 